Welcome to you, my name's Dale and this is Dale's Addiction and this is part two of my August Q&A thanks to everybody who put the questions out. If you haven't seen part one, I'll link it above and also in the description box below. Can you surf? Uh, no, but I can bodyboard. Well, I used to be able to. So catching waves on a bodyboard where you're kind of laying on it, I can do that. What's your favorite thing to cook on the barbie, on the barbecue? Um, a great Wagyu steak. Um, I love a Wagyu steak, which is nice and crisp on the outside and medium rare on the inside, divine. Um, you know, despite common understanding, we don't really cook shrimps on the barbie. Uh, we don't even call it shrimp, we call them prawns. Um, so yeah, we always laugh that, you know, people say, oh, put a shrimp on the barbie and it's like, yeah, we don't do that. <laughs> what would your dream home look like? Oh, look, I think that depends on where I'm at, but ultimately, um, Mr. Addiction and I have spoken about moving to a beachside area in the next kind of 10 years. We want to be at least have bought a property in terms of what it will look like. It will be open and airy, it'll be multifunctional, it'll be um, full of natural materials like stone and wood and polished concrete, um, big windows, yeah, um, it'll be warm and homely and yeah, beautiful, that's what it will be. It'll be a lot of the outside in. I don't, I mean, we live in a character kind of home now, this home was built in 1930 and it's had renovations but um and i love it but yeah living on the beach um it would be a lot of bringing the outdoors in and simplicity i think what does your home say about you um my home in the current state says that i love color um we love color we love whimsy and fun we love, um, you know, beautiful fabrics. Um, my bathroom has this same wallpaper in it. Um, it's, it's like a hotel at home. I keep itching my head because my hair's sitting funny. Um, it says we don't take ourselves too seriously. It is welcoming. Yeah, I love our home. It's beautiful. Has your Peloton earned its money yet? Yeah, I think so. It's totally changed my approach to exercise. I love that it's social without having to see people. Um, I love that the music is kind of the backbone of the workout. And I love that I can challenge myself against myself or against others or against nobody and just hop on and have a ride. So absolutely, I love the Peloton. Do you think designer homeware is worth it? Blankets, plates, cups and pillows. I am going to make a radical assumption that you're talking about the Hermes homewares, um, the blankets and the pillows that everybody buys. For me, no. For me, they're very, um, they don't fit with my vibe or my climate at all. Um, no. <laughs> No, I like the Passifolia range from Hermes because it's quite tropical and floral. But yeah, I, I no, And I think a lot of people are just keeping them for ornaments and that's fine for home decor. Um, but if you're not using them like um, Ash, it looks, he is buying Hermes and he uses it. You know, he'll eat his sandwich off it and drink his cup of tea in it. And I think that's great. But I think if you're buying it ornamentally or you're buying it so that you can qualify for your quota, then that's up to you as well. But for me, I've not really seen any homewares that I think are very nice. And I've seen a lot um, unboxed on YouTube and it, yeah, it just doesn't fit with my style at all. T-Bills 2013. Do you get any luxury hate at work? No, I don't. In fact, I get a lot of uh, curiosity about my bags, especially when I carry my, this is not a Gucci bag, um, Balenciaga tote to work. People always want to know what it says and ask me about it. And people are really kind of interested. So yeah, no, I don't get any hate at work. And I think that's because I don't hide it. I I wear my luxury to work and people ask me and I engage with them and I think that's a big change for me compared to what I might have done before, which was kind of hide it away or be very meek about it. 
Izzy put my name in bold. Hi Dale, love the channel and Aussie perspective. What do you think of the Fendi hand in hand baguettes? Oh, they are just stunning and thanks for this question. The hand in hand I think was launched at the back end of 2020 or maybe 2021 where Fendi went around Italy and found expert artisans in crafts like lace making, um, in, in weaving and embroidery and had them make a baguette. They are just works of art, um, just stunning and I think the um, the Fendi flagship store in Rome does have a kind of museum um, slash workshop where you can see some of the inspiration for these pieces as well so yeah just it's really special that they have showcased these you know special special arts um, from people in Italy and shared that broadly. Neen Car One. If you could travel back in time purely for fashion, what year or era would it be? I'd go back to the 90s. I'd go back to the 90s and live the 90s again. I um, was from the age of 9 to 19 in the 90s. Um, I think knowing what I know now, I would have um, I would have seen myself in a much better light. I, you know, you always look back and think I thought I was fat then, but I wasn't. Um, if I was me now with the means that I have now, I would have gone crazy for Fendi. I would have been crazy for Louis Vuitton um, and Gucci, and I would have been living my best life. I mean, I had a great time in the '90s anyway, but. You know, half of it was high school, so that was a bit awkward. But the the latter half of the '90s, I would have watched the Sex and the City um, season. You know, at the time instead of afterwards when I was a bit older. Lots of things. Uh, yeah, the '90s are supreme. I, Katie, uh, house is on fire. Grab two bags. Go. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I don't know. Two bags. I'm grabbing these two. Sentimental and sentimental. Hi <laughs> Katie, what did you want to be when you grew up? I wanted to be a divorce lawyer. Um, from a kind of macabre perspective that when I was going to school, a lot of my friends were, um, you know, their parents were separated. And I thought, there's money to be made here. Um, and I always liked the idea of being a lawyer. I wanted to drive a black BMW convertible. I do that, but I'm not a divorce lawyer. Um, yeah, I think I was saying that from like eight years old. So yeah, that's saying something, isn't it? <laughs> and my parents didn't divorce until I was like 40. So crazy. And I, Katie, um, what other colors have you dyed your hair? Would you now go another shade? Um, I've pretty much always been brunette with like little um, bits of lightning. When I go to the hairdresser, it will not surprise you knowing my done but undone style that I say, make it look like you haven't coloured my hair and make it look like you haven't cut my hair. I'd never want to look like I've come straight from the salon. And Gregson, my hairdresser, he knows that and he always has a laugh with me. I've had, you know, back in the, in the early 90s, I had the copper tips in my hair like a lot of us did. Um... The lightest I've gone, you've probably seen me on this channel. Um, when I had my pixie first cut, I really wanted to go platinum blonde. It was when Kim Kardashian went platinum blonde. But unfortunately, my hairdresser at the time just really stuffed it up. Um, and that really scared me. So um, Gregson has said that he could do that. I'd love to do it. I think I could totally carry it with my colouring. Um, and my mother was blonde for quite a long time. So um, with her colouring, I think it would work. But yeah, I'm not sure if I've, um, if I've got the energy and dollars to commit to that kind of transition. So I might just leave it as it is for a bit. You have to change your real name to Valentino or Chanel, etc. What do you pick? Oh, well, not Chanel. Um, I actually have a niece named Chanel. <laughs> so, um, um, Valentina would be cute, but that's not a name. 
Um, you know, I've got a unisex name now, so I'd go with Christian for Christian Dior. How about that? Or could I go with Louis? <laughs> no, I'd go with Christian. Christian Louboutin or Christian Dior. Yeah, that's what I'd do. Glenda, please. Hi, Glenda. Loving your new fuchsia vibes. Uh, what do you think of the new Olock swing bags? I haven't seen one in person, um, but I like the chain. I like the fact that the chain has the gold and the silver and the tortoiseshell. Um, I want to see one. Um, I think they're cute. Like, I'm not sure that I could wear it on my shoulder, but I could definitely wear it as a clutch. So, yeah, I'd like to see one in person. Dr. Masali. Hi, how you doing? What drives you to perform exceptionally in the different avenues of your life? Um, I, I, wow. Um, I don't think that I do perform exceptionally. I could, but I have never been committed to something enough, I think, to perform exceptionally. I performed exceptionally in certain areas of my schooling where I was responsible for putting myself through school. Um, and I did so with voracious tenacity and I did really well, but then I didn't do anything with it for quite a while because I was tired. I think I'm somebody who wants to put in just enough um, to get the outcome I want, um, but not so much so that I'm ever an expert or I ever complete anything. I've got a real issue with completing things. I like things to still be a work in progress, including myself. Um, but yeah, I think what drives me is learning. It's one of my big motivators is learning. Um, and when I have an area of interest, I, you know, I just, you can't stop me. Um, and also um, aesthetics, so things that are beautiful and interesting, textural, creative, um, they really inspire me too. And so I will often be moving things around my house and um, I'm not trying to make a display home, I'm not trying to make it look like a palace. I want it to be comfortable and interesting and beautiful and bring a smile to my face and you know like I've just bought this new um, cane bookshelf and that wouldn't be everyone's cup of tea I so much more prefer that earthy look to a heap of white cabinets um, which is what you normally see in YouTube backgrounds you will always see me surrounded by chaos and color so yeah I don't know if that answers your question but Learning and aesthetics, art, those are things that really inspire me in my life. Katty Disola, do you think your fringe is working for you? Um, well, I don't know if it's working for me, but it's making me work, that's for sure, Katty. <laughs> um, yeah, it's taken a little bit to get used to. I think it definitely brings a more youthful look to my face. It really softens my face. I'm still getting used to, you know, sometimes, well, in the morning, I look like a cat that's been electrocuted <laughs> and that's really annoying and, you know, um, sweeping it up off my face and just getting out of the habit of touching it all the time. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm happy that I just changed it up a bit. Holly Grace Skerritt. Hi, Holly. Have you got your eye on anything to buy at the Fendi event that you're running? running hosting um so if you hadn't heard um i'm having a meet and greet at fendi in brisbane in september um which is will be the month that you're watching this because it's the end of august today um well uh, <laughs> um yeah uh, look i'm on the fence about this fox fendi first in the beautiful fiery red um but other than that, I don't really know what's coming. By the time the event comes, the 25th um, anniversary of the Baguette show will be launched. I think Fashion Week will have happened. The second drop of the Fall Winter would have come. So there's quite a lot of unknowns at the moment, Holly. Um, so I'm just keeping my options open. Elizabeth Duffy, 34. I live in the UK. Are the bags much more expensive in Australia? And if so, why? 
Um, yeah, they are. And there's been a few people that have reported on, ex you know, luxury being expensive here. Classics with a Quirk did a video ages ago about where's the most expensive place in the world to buy Chanel. And I think it was Japan followed by Australia. Um, now, I can only speak on my own experience with Fendi. And here's how I'm going to break it down for you. When I did my Fendi rant and I talked about this, people said, oh no, it's because it's cheaper in Europe, blah, 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 and it's customs and duties and tariffs and taxes. It's not. It's the price. So my purple sequin baguette here, I have ordered the pink one. Now, the arrangement that I have with the pink one is that there will be no VAT, so value added tax charged. It will be exported to Australia. At the point that it comes to Australia, it will be eligible to pay duties, goods and services tax, and a handling fee. Now, the duties and goods and services tax is 15% on top of the value of the bag and the freight of getting the bag to Australia, plus an $88 fee. That bag is still $1,000 cheaper than what I paid for the purple sequin baguette back in 2020. So it's the price. Uh, why, why? I don't know. And the fact that we don't get the stock, so we pay more for less option, is also a mystery to me. I don't, I don't know. Um, I don't know. Elizabeth Duffy, 34 again. If you could keep three bags in your collection, which three would they be? Well, I showed you two in the first part of this video, um, which is, I'll get them. So this one, because this one, you know, this just makes me smile. Uh, this one, because it's just a beautiful heritage piece from Louis Vuitton and my gorgeous husband bought it for me. And I'm going to say this one, whoop, this one, as I mentioned in part one as well, because it was such a big commitment to buy this bag and it's just perfect for me and my lifestyle and what I like to wear. Clem again, zero one. When you get in a rut, how do you pull yourself up out of it? Ah, uh, it's a good question, Claire. I um, I don't often find myself in a rut. Um, in fact, I've probably got very low compassion for myself when I'm in a rut. Um, and I really, it's something that I really struggle with in others is when they're in a rut and they just won't get out of it. So, um, I guess one of my values is around being, um, self perpetuating, um, you know, no one's going to help you be independent, find a way, figure out how, what did you do? How did you contribute to it? What are you going to do next? look for ways you can contribute to situations instead of sitting back and going, why is this happening to me? Um, and it does feel, um, for some people would say, oh, you, you could lack empathy for people who don't have that characteristic and they might be right. Um, I struggle, I lose a lot of energy with people who just want to whinge and complain um, and stay where they are instead of looking for ways to move forward. Um, I, I honestly really struggle with it. And when I find that in myself, I can really dislike myself. Um, as Freud says, you know, all projection is a form of denial. So things that you dislike in others, characteristics you dislike in others is what you really dislike in yourself. And for me, that's being a victim. Um, so... I don't stay in ruts for very long, but what that can do, um, that lack of compassion for my situation or the situation I'm in is that I can then, um, you know, work myself into quite a stressful situation where I just keep perpetually banging my head against a metaphorical brick wall, trying to will things to happen and putting a lot of energy into things that maybe I can't control instead of just accepting this is how it is and there's nothing you can do about it, um, which are words that um, feel like poison as they come out of my mouth. <laughs> uh, Candace is back. You have to make a new bag out of parts of your current collection. What elements, straps, buckles, materials, etc. do you use? Well, um, that's a great question. 
I think it would definitely be like a natural material bag. So wicker or rattan or something, raffia, straw. Um, so I would use that. I would have leather trim, so a leather strap. Um, I don't know. You know what? I could do a nice Louis Vuitton wicker bag. I would love to do a Louis Vuitton. It would be possible to do a petite boy chapeau in wicker with monogram trim. That's what I'm talking about. That would be cool. You heard it here first, guys. Uh, this question is from YouTube. IB, what are your favorite luxury sneakers? All right, uh, my favorite luxury sneakers. I'm going to say, and this might surprise you, I've only had my Golden Goose for a little bit. Um, so I'm not giving them the favorite as yet. But the favorite ones that I've had for the longest that I find go with most outfits are my Valentino Untitled. I just love how these look with everything. Um, they are comfortable now. I've worn them in. Um, I use them as um, dressy sneakers. I wear them with suits for work as well. They're really cool um, because the branding is quite minimal and they just have the studs on them. But yeah, they are my favorites. I wish that they were better to wear in summer because they're all leather. They can just be a little bit hot for us here in the summertime. But um, yeah, they're my faves for sure. That's Speedy 20 Girl. Hi, Delilah. And Delilah has her own YouTube channel as well, which I will link in the description box below. Pick three fragrances to use for the rest of your life, not Louis Vuitton. Oh, okay. Well, given that I'm not a big fragrance person, um, which means I don't, I stick with one that I love and I just wear it, I'm going to be telling you something about my past. Um, so if I went to the first fragrance that I loved and I used to wear over and over and over again, it was Ralph Lauren Romance. Uh, put your hand up in the comments if you're a big fan of Ralph Lauren Romance. I certainly was as a uh, coming into my coming into age in the 90s. I loved that scent, and I've still got some bottles of it here. Um, then the next big stage that I went through was. Dior Flora, was that what it was called? No, Miss Dior, Miss Dior, I think. Um, if I can find the bottle, I'll put it here and the label on the bottom. I can't even remember what it's called, but I went through quite a few bottles of that one as well. And then finally, uh, Chanel Coco Mademoiselle. Um, I still love that, but after using the Louis Vuitton fragrances, I find that it's very, it doesn't smell like it came from real things it smells very manufactured um so my opinion on that fragrance has really changed after discovering the louis vuitton fragrances i have to say kc baldrick hi dale your style and genuine opinions can we see a shoe video with your fendi multicolors do you mean my rainbow shoes um is that what you mean? Let me know on that one. Or do you mean my bag? I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Okay, so that was my final question. Thank you so, so much to everyone who submitted questions, especially you, Candice, at Perstopia. Super appreciate the time that you take to come up with these questions. They're always really interesting and get me thinking. If you um, have liked this video, please give me a thumbs up, drop your comments in the comments box below and check out the YouTubers that I have mentioned during these videos. I put out videos on Wednesdays and Sundays and sometimes some extra ones. So I'd really love to see you back here. Until then, ciao.